Okay, so um, just got home from church a little while ago and my baby's taking a nap, so I'm gonna try to, to get this one done without interruptions. Um, so I'm gonna talk about Sharon in this one. And um, I just pray that, um, that, that this, this story that I'm about to share um, just comes across in a way that you can understand the impact that it made on me. Because God revealed something to me really, really big, and it, and it doesn't just affect me. I think that it um, it affects just our time, like uh, you know, the, uh, the time in history we're at right now. Um, and so this this is just very significant what He revealed to me uh, through this whole experience. And so um, anyway. I talked uh, about earlier about how I'd gone and prayed for Sharon, the lady that um, had pancreatic cancer. And I was really believing God, you know, to heal her. Um, I, I believed that the reason that he wanted me to go pray for her was for healing. And um, anyway, on February the 20th, I found out when I got to work that day that Sharon passed away. And I was just disappointed and confused and you know, I didn't understand, like I really had been just praying like for her and I, and I just thought like the reason that God had put her on my heart so heavy was like for healing and and so I just had like, you know, just kind of a disappoint, disappointed, um, confused feeling about it. And um, anyway, that night, so the night that Sharon died, February 20th, I ended up having a dream that night. And I dreamed that I was in a classroom in a place that I'd never been before. I didn't recognize the place. And the teacher of the class was Bob Jones. For those that may not know Bob Jones, he was um, he was a prophetic man, that um, probably one of the most prophetic people to live in, in our day. But he died a few years ago, I think in like the, uh, 2014. But anyway, in my dream, Bob Jones was the teacher, which was kind of weird because I hadn't really like watched him a whole lot. I know I've mentioned him like in a couple of other videos, but um, you know, I don't I don't typically watch Bob Jones that much, and so um, I know that it wasn't like my subconscious. It was totally random for him to be in my dream. Um, and so anyway, he was the teacher of the class, and he was teaching on healing, and he was telling the class. Um, that healing will come. He said, you might not have seen it yet, but healing will come. And he said, the reason that I can tell you that is because I've seen it happen. And um, the other thing I remember from that dream is I was on my knees the entire time. And I remember my knees hurting. Like I was telling the girl that was next to me that my knees hurt. And, um, and I woke up. And I just remember like having such a peace from God, like, and an encouragement. Like, it's like he was telling me like not to be discouraged and to keep on praying for people. And so I had a peace that God used me and whatever, whatever his purpose was for me to go pray for Sharon, like it was fulfilled and, and, um, and just to continue to pray for healing and, and being on my knees, you know, um, I think just symbolized like that just continue to seek him, you know, to use me in that way. And, and it's just going to come through, through time with him and seeking him. And anyway, so that, that was really neat that I dreamed that on the night that Sharon died. And the next day was February 21st and Billy Graham died that day. And, um, the day after that, February 22nd, I happened to be scrolling through Instagram and I saw a post from Sean Bowles. Um, and it was a picture of Billy Graham and Sean Bowles, um, is in the prophetic ministry and I follow him on Instagram and he is incredible. Like when it comes to word of words of knowledge, you know, if that's something that interests you, definitely like check him out on YouTube. But anyway, Sean Bowles had posted a picture on Instagram of Billy Graham and his caption said something along the lines of how he remembered like many times how Bob Jones would tell him about how the um, end time harvest before the Lord returns, um, how the mark of that end time harvest uh, was going to be the death of Billy Graham. 
and so it was like you know we're we're coming upon a new time you know and um and and Billy Graham's death was a, a mark of that in time harvest like a sign of it and and come to find out like I was texting my aunt about it you know whenever I saw that and then she told me like she just so happened to at the same time saw this thing on YouTube where Benny Hinn prophesied the same thing and um so evidently it was it was a prophetic thing that I wasn't aware of and I just thought how weird was it that the day before Billy Graham died I dreamed about Bob Jones and he told me that healing was coming you know because in this um in this last day's harvest you know there there's just a you know going to be just an outpouring of, of God's spirit and and so uh Anyway, I just thought that was really cool, you know, because I felt like, you know, um, you know, what are the odds of dreaming about Bob Jones and him telling me healing's going to come and then Billy Graham dies and then there was a, a prophecy about that, you know, about how Billy Graham's death would be the mark of, you know, the, this end time harvest. And and then I'd had the dream of the return of Christ and, um, and the rivers in the desert dream, you know, like God had been speaking to me. And anyway, it just kind of confirmed things to me, and it was just really exciting. And it just so happened, like, I'd started a movie, and um, I didn't get to watch the movie. I just had the beginning, like, it was playing. And, and at the time I looked up, right after I saw that post from Sean Bowles, the movie, like the lady said in the movie, she said, it's revival season. The movie was the uh, same kind of different as me, but the very beginning of that movie starts out with a lady saying, it's revival season, and it was, I was like, what are the odds of this? You know, it's just another God thing, but, um, so anyway, um, meanwhile, uh, in February, um, I brought my boys to Abraham's tent for Valentine's Day, and I brought them, like, to pass out goodies to the kids there. Well, I happened to meet a lady there that was homeless, and, um, when I talked to her that day, like, I asked her, you yeah, know, how are you doing? You know, like, we were just, like, talking to everybody that came in, and, and she said, well, my parents taught me respect, so I'm not going to curse. And she, like, acted like she was hitting herself in the face. And I knew, like, she just, she looked like she had a really, really hard life, and she looked really just kind of bad off. And, you know, a lot of people there are homeless, and, and, look like they have rough lives, but this lady really, really just looked, um, really down and out, and, um, out of all the people that day, she really stuck in my mind, and I didn't know her name or anything, but, but not long after that, I ended up having a vision of her face in the night, like, I woke up in the middle of the night, and, like, I just had my eyes closed, and, like, I saw her face, which was weird, because I'd only met her once, and, and I just saw it, like, plainly, and, um, and I knew like God wanted me to help her and I didn't know what he wanted me to do, but I went to Abraham's tent like a couple more times and I was looking specifically for her and she wasn't there like the couple times I went. And then one day, like my third time to go, um, I happened to be pulling in and as I was pulling in the driveway, like I saw her walking up the sidewalk. And so I parked and I went and met her on the sidewalk and she walked right up to me and like she grabbed, she reached out and grabbed both of my hands and just had her head down like this and just started sobbing. And, um, and I was like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And she was saying how she couldn't feel her feet because she had diabetes. And, um, and I told her my name, you know, I said, I'm Brittany. I said, what's your name? And she said, um, she said, my name's Sharon. And Sharon, the other lady that, like the original Sharon that I'd prayed for, had, had recently passed away at this point. So when she said her name was Sharon, um, it just really touched my heart because I was like, God put another Sharon on my heart. You know, like it, it, it just meant something to me. And I knew, like, this is God. And um, so anyway, I prayed with her. I told her how God had shown me her vision of her face and how he led me directly to her and that he saw her and he loved her and that she was not forgotten by God. And And I asked her what she needed, you know. And, and a lot of times it's hard when you're helping the homeless because, you know, it's like, how do you help? They need everything, you know. And so um, she told me that she wanted to get to Florida to get to her daughter in Florida. And so... I told her I would buy her a bus ticket. And so I went to 
the Greyhound station and Sharon stayed and ate lunch at Abraham's tent and I told her like I'm gonna go get your bus ticket and I'll be back and she was like oh my goodness and just hugged me and, and um, just she was like telling all of her friends bye and I went to the bus station down the road the Greyhound station and there was a Muslim lady that was working at the Greyhound station and and so as I was like buying the ticket to Florida um, the Greyhound lady was asking me like what my name was and like my driver's license like to input the information for the ticket and I was like well it's not for me so it's for a lady named Sharon and she said uh, what's her last name and I said I don't know and she said well why are you buying a ticket for somebody you don't know and I said well God gave me a vision of her face in the night and she's a homeless woman and I know that he was telling me to help her and so that's why I'm buying the ticket so she can get her daughter to Florida in Florida and and this Muslim lady was like she said well what religion are you I said I'm not a religion I said I'm just Christian I said the Holy Spirit's alive and he speaks to me and and um and I said you know he he specifically showed me her face and she said were you psychic and I was like no it's not psychic so it's the Holy Spirit and um and so she was just asking me like all these questions like where do you go to church and you know and uh, and I just thought it was cool because like she, you know she's not even a Christian and she was like asking me like kind of pulling information from me and and I just thought like how cool is this like God's using this to reach this woman and because she just saw like the love of Jesus you know like why 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 would you be buying this stranger a bus ticket you know and uh I was like, because God told me to, you know, and so anyway, um, so I went back to Abraham's tent and gave Sharon the ticket and, 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 and I ended up calling the best uh, lady later that afternoon to make sure she showed up like for, I think she was leaving at like four o'clock. And so I called like after four to make sure Sharon actually showed up and got on the bus. And she was like, oh yeah, she did. And so, um, anyway, uh, a little while later, like on March 1st, I happened to just look on Instagram and I saw this picture of a rose and it was posted by Hillsong and um, and the caption of it talked about the rose of Sharon and as I read it it was talking about how the rose of Sharon grows in the valley of Sharon and it reminded me of Isaiah 65 that the Lord had shown me at church like whenever he gave me the courage to go pray for Sharon and um, and I just like started crying when I read that about the Rose of Sharon because I was just thinking about the two Sharons like that God called me to help and pray for and um, and anyway it just touched my heart the Rose of Sharon was significant to me because of those two ladies and so um, anyway um, so a, a couple of weeks ago um, I was called to fast and I wasn't sure why and um, and I just was obedient and I started fasting and um, around like the fourth day of my fast I um, was taking a bath and I was listening to I had put it on it was actually Bob Jones and he was talking about the last day's church and listening to that sermon like as I was taking a bath I just started crying because what he was saying like really resonated with me and he was talking about how this remnant's going to rise up you know um in in this like this end time harvest before christ and this remnant that rises up is going to have just this burning heart for god and just all consuming you know and so i just felt like like god had already spoken to me kind of you know through what I'd seen like with Sean Bowles and then I dreamed of Bob Jones the day before Billy Graham died and then listening to this sermon and and just hearing him talk about this just this consuming fire you know that like God's just going to consume this you know this remnant and I was just like that's how I feel you know like I just started thinking about myself and just how where I was a couple of years ago and just I've just become consumed by God. I really have, and um, and it's awesome. But it, I just totally re like resonated with that. And so, um, at the end of it, he was talking about how the first that are going to come are going to be the prodigals. 
And he just kept saying that and like praying for the prodigals. The prodigals are coming home. The prodigals are coming home. He kept saying that like the end of the message. And um, so anyway, the next day was Saturday and uh, out of the blue, <laughs> I got a phone call from my family member that I spoke about in the prior video that, that was homeless, that um, hadn't talked to in years and had no idea like where he was, you know, and all of a sudden he was calling me and telling me that he wanted to get out of that life and that he needed help. And, and I was just like, okay, you know, and so, um, after I hung up with him, I was completely overwhelmed because I already felt like what I had listened to the night before, like God was speaking to me through it. And then here I am the next day and just out of the blue, prodigals coming home, you know, like just, it, it was just the timing of it just blew me away. And so, um, and then I realized like, God, this is why God's had me fasting, you know, it's for him to break free. I just knew it. And, um, so anyway, I was overwhelmed after I got off the phone and I was just like, I just knew like, this is all God's hand. Like I just knew it. And so my husband's Bible was sitting on the kitchen counter and I just randomly like opened it. And I was just like, wanted to hear from God. And and it opened to Song of Solomon 8. And it it kind of struck me because earlier that morning in my prayer closet, when I opened my Bible, I opened to Song of Solomon 8. And so I knew that wasn't a coincidence. And so I, I came in my prayer closet and I got my Bible. And because um, I, I like, I use the Passion Translation, um, Song of Solomon's and, and the Passion Translation. And so um, I started reading Song of Solomon 8, starting in verse 5, and I've never read scripture before and been this emotionally impacted. Like, as I was reading it, I was sobbing, like, couldn't catch my breath, sobbing, and um, I had had a vision, I forgot to mention this, two days prior, so that Thursday, I had this vision where I was sitting on my back porch, just on my like rocking chair and I was watching my boys play and like my eyes were open like I'm just sitting on the porch watching them play and I started seeing these um looks like just these big sparkles I know that sounds weird at first I thought it was like my eyes playing tricks with me because of the sun or something but they started to form what looked like a chain like just this beautiful glistening chain and I was just like what is this God you know and I, I wasn't sure why he was showing me that and and I was thinking about like Paul and how he said that he was a prisoner in chains and, you know, like that we're chained to Christ or, you know, like I wasn't sure why I was seeing the chain. But when I started reading this passage in Song of Solomon 8, like I remembered the vision of the chain. And, um, and this, this particular passage talks about, um, I'll just, I'll just read like starting in verse six, it says, Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. This living, consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. And it goes on there. It's, it's really just awesome. I, I boxed in where it says, Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. And it's exactly like kind of what Bob Jones was talking about when I was listening to you the night before that was just touching me so much because I was like, I just feel like I have that, like this consuming fire in my heart for God. And and then reading that and then talking about, um, I'll seal you as my prisoner of love. And I was like, that reminds me of the chain image, you know, like I'm his prisoner of love. And um, anyway, uh, I just got super touched by Song of Solomon 8 especially verse six. That's all. I mean, I underlined this. I did this all that day. I underlined the whole thing pretty much from, from beginning in chapter five through seven, but I boxed in six where it says, fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. And, um, so anyway, I texted when, when that happened, I texted my mom, my sisters, um, my friends, my preacher's wife that I'm friends with, I texted them Song of Solomon 8, like this passage, and just told them how I felt like, based off what I'd listened to the night before from Bob Jones, 
and what he had, what the Lord had shown me in Song of Solomon 8, how I felt like that this passage was like directly speaking to this last day's remnant, like this, that's going to have this fire on their hearts. And I said, I just, I just feel it in my spirit, like that, that this is the pa- this is the passage for this day that we are in right now. And, and just for this remnant that's rising up, that's going to bring in this, this harvest before the Lord returns. And, and, you know, nobody knows when, when the Lord is going to return. It could be still, you know, like 50 years from now or longer, you know, we don't know. But I, I, I just seriously believe in my spirit that, that we are, we're at the end of the age. You know, we are, we, we that, the, that the Lord's spirit's pouring out and he's rising up this, this last day's harvest. And, and, um, anyway, and he's just spoken that to me. He's just put, put it on my heart. And I believe that Song of Solomon 8, um, is the mark of that? Is the mark? Is the mark of those that um, that are going to bring in this this harvest? And even me just doing this video right now, you know, just me trying to reach people like whoever I can. Um, this is not. I've never done anything like this, you know. And it's like I just feel like God's just totally moving. He is just moving, and um, and we're just in really, really awesome time right now and uh and he's just wanting to just he's wanting his glory declared across this earth and so anyway song of solomon 8 that day like totally just broke me like i was just couldn't couldn't control myself with emotion whenever i was reading that passage and that doesn't normally happen you know and um and it, it just really touched me and so anyway so uh, that was Saturday. That, I think Monday, like a couple days later. So I brought, I brought the family member to church with me on Sunday, which was awesome. And our preacher, like all the way to church, like I just kept telling him, like God has purpose for your life. You're stepping into your purpose. Like I just knew it. Like I just had this, I was just speaking life over him. And then the preacher came up to him after church and asked if he could pray for him. And and just told him that he kept getting a verse for him. And it's from, um, it's the verse that talks about a time such as this. And uh, I believe it's in Esther. And, and you know, like that, that your whole life has led up to a time such as this. You were about to step into your purpose. And, and I've stayed in touch with him, like where he is. And I just feel like God's using him, you know, with the... Um, you know, in the place that he's at and just to minister to the others that are with him and just to be a light. And, uh, and anyway, it's just really exciting, but I got so much kickback and like, and just fight from the enemy, you know, whenever he was coming out of that, like I I talked about in the second video about, um, just the, I literally felt the warfare, the demonic against me when I was, when I was interceding for him. And, um, and it's like they wanted to keep him held back, but he broke out. And uh, anyway, so anyway, so that happened Sunday. He came to church with me. Then on Monday, I was in my prayer closet before work. And um, I was looking on YouTube to just put on some worship music. I don't watch sermons hardly ever in my prayer closet, every once in a while. But typically when I'm in my prayer closet in the mornings, I just try to like read my Bible or pray or just be still. And so, um, I was just open YouTube to put on a, a, um, like worship music in the background and the recommended videos, like I didn't do a search, but the recommended videos listed, one of them said, uh, Rose of Sharon. And it was a, just a little 11 minute, like portion of a sermon by Mike Bickle. And so I was just like, hmm, you know, I've already explained why Rose of Sharon is significant to me. And so I, I just felt like this, this is from God. Like, I'm going to click on this, like to see about the Rose of Sharon, because it's, it's very significant to me. And um, so when I clicked on it, and I started listening to it, I can't explain like how um, deeply it touched me. Um, it was 100% God that led me to that. And, um, 
you'll have to listen to it, I guess, for it to like have its full effect. But now that you know like how, how God had spoken to me specifically through Song of Solomon 8 that Saturday, like before, and I'd shared it with family and my preacher's wife and telling them how it was a word for this time and how I felt like it was for this this last day's like remnant that's rising up and how I just felt like the Lord had spoken that to me. Well, whenever I, I listened to this Rose of Sharon video, um, I'm not going to give too much away, but it totally talked about Song of Solomon 8. <laughs> Like, of, of all things that it could have talked about, of all things that this Rose of Sharon video could have been about, it was about Bob Jones. I had no idea just by clicking on it that it just said Rose of Sharon by Mike Bickle. I, I didn't know what it was going to be about, but it was about um, a word from Bob Jones uh, and, and, and an incorporated and Song of Solomon 8. And... Um, and I felt like the Lord had spoken to me through Bob Jones that, that Friday night when I was taking, in a bath, taking a bath and listening to it, how I just got so emotional listening to it about this fire upon our hearts. And I just felt like God was speaking to me through that. And then, um, and then finding Song of Solomon 8 the next day, uh, and it just totally moving me. And, um, and so then that Monday, whenever I listened to the Rose of Sharon, um, I, I just can't even explain. The whole thing was about Song of Solomon 8 and what it means for this for this day that we're in. And it confirmed everything that the Lord had told me. And I was completely overwhelmed, like completely. And I sent it to my family and my, my preacher's wife. And um, I was like, you're not going to believe this. Like, this is exactly what I was telling y'all, you know. And, uh, and it just confirmed it. And so anyway, um, for this to kind of like, make sense to you like fully you'll have to listen to that video and it's um if you just look on youtube and just search rose of sharon mike bickle it's an 11 minute video like i think 40 something seconds um but just picture me like in my prayer closet that monday and just listening to that after what happened saturday like after just you know after what the Lord had spoken to me about Song of Solomon 8, you know, and I don't even, I never even like really read Song of Solomon. Like I'm not that familiar with Song of Solomon. And so just, just to have clicked on that video because of, of the reason that the Lord made Rose of Sharon so special to me, um, it's like he used those two Sharons and, and incorporated it as like the Rose of Sharon to me. Like, I don't even know how he did that, but he, he made it to where that meant something to me so that I would click on that video and I would watch it and the timing of it would be um, exactly when it was. And, um, and so it, it means something really big for the time that we're in right now. And, um, and Song of Solomon 8 really is like describing like the, the bride, like God's church, like, like the ones right now that are going to bring in his harvest. And, um, and so, um, I just, I'm just going to end this by reading this portion of Song of Solomon 8. And, um, just one other thing to note that I realized after the fact, um, in listening to uh, I, I was curious, like, you know, I didn't know when Bob Jones died, and and I found, like, his last word to the church, like, before he died, like, his last, um, last thing he shared, and, and his last vision, very last vision he had that he shared, um, the first thing he saw was an apple tree, and, um, and the fruit of the apple tree was, like, the peacemakers that, that were going to Okay, I accidentally pressed pause, and so I don't really know where I am. Um, I'm going to, uh, sorry if this gets messed up, but I don't want to have to re-record the whole thing, but I'm going to read uh, Song of Solomon 8 just to um, to end this video, and then, and then look up Mike Bickle, 
Rose of Sharon on YouTube, so this all makes sense. But before, before I finish, I'm just going to read this, starting verse 5. This is the bridegroom king, so this is what, what like Christ is saying to his bride. Um, Who is this one? Look at her now. She arises out of her desert, clinging to her beloved. When I awakened you under the apple tree, as you were feasting upon me, I awakened your innermost being with the travail of birth. As you longed for more of me, fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. This living, consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. My passion is stronger than the chains of death and the grave, all consuming as the very flashes of fire from the burning heart of God. Place this fierce, unrelenting fire over your entire being. Rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish this flame. Endless floods will be able to quench, unable to quench this raging fire that burns within you. Everything will be consumed. It will stop at nothing as you yield everything to this furious fire until it won't even seem like a sacrifice anymore. And uh, that just totally spoke to my heart um, about kind of what God's done in me. And... Um, it doesn't feel like a sacrifice to me, honestly. Like, it, um, I just want to live my life for Him. I want to give it all for Him. And uh, anyway, so look up Mike Bickle's Rose of Sharon. It's 11 minutes on YouTube, and and um, and hopefully that'll help kind of tie all this together. And you'll see what I see what I listened to that Monday in my prayer closet when I totally just freaked out because of how incredible God is and how He speaks to us in the most unbelievable ways. Um, so that's it.